In this video, I'm gonna show you a simple yet powerful mastering chain to help take your songs from this to this. If you wanna learn how I did that, stay tuned. Now better talk to me nice, cause I'm up right now. Bitch, I'm up right now. Bitch, I'm up right now. Bitch, better talk to me nice, no matter the price. We always rolling the dice, mixing the shit with the sprite. Get left or right, you know it's the A for life. Yo, what's up, guys? Jay Foos here from Mad Red Studios, and today I wanna share with you my basic mastering chain I use on hip hop songs. I'm gonna show you the plugins that I use and explain my method of thinking when processing my mix buzz. Now, bear in mind, I am by no means claiming to be a mastering engineer. I have taken mastering classes in school and I've had the pleasure of working with some extremely talented mastering engineers in the past. And let me tell you, mastering is truly an art form in itself. There are tools and specific techniques used that are far beyond the scope of this video. I'm simply gonna show you my basic mastering chain that you can use today to get your songs to knock. So, if you're ready to learn some tips and tricks, Let's fire in. Every single hip hop song that I work on, I always start with my recording, mixing, and mastering template that I've created that has all of these plugins pre-set up for me at the right levels that I usually have them at. This way it just saves me that time from having to set up things over and over again. Things that I do every single session and that really just take a lot of time, I like to have those set up in my template already so that I can just get started and hit the ground running and really get the song sounding good fast. I can't stress enough how helpful having a mix template can be for your workflow and speeding up your overall time of mixing as well as just getting that nice consistent sound that you developed and that you're used to hearing. All right, so to start out, I'm gonna go ahead and explain how all my audio tracks are actually getting fed to the master fader. So let's go ahead and zoom in here just on these top four tracks. These are my main auxiliary tracks here. So you can see down here I have these two yellow tracks. These are my main auxiliary buses for all vocals. So all of my vocals and vocal effects are getting fed through this Vox track and all of my music stems and anything that's considered music is being fed through this music bus. So all the vocals and all the music are then being fed out through my submix bus here, which is then finally being fed out through this master fader. Now the reason I use this submix bus is actually for gain staging purposes. So let me explain a little bit. The way that Pro Tools buses work, you have auxiliary tracks, and you also have master fader tracks. Now auxiliary tracks are what I use for all of my subgroups, but master fader is what I'm using for this submix. The one thing that's unique about master faders in Pro Tools is this volume fader right here is actually controlling how much volume I'm feeding into my plugins instead of the final output of this track. So basically all that means is I'm able to control my amount of headroom going into my master chain before I even hit that mix bus. So check it out, if I open up this plugin here, Let's make it active. If I bring this volume all the way down and I push play, there's no signal getting fed into this plugin, which is awesome. That means I can control just exactly how hard I want to hit this plugin. So I can start bringing this up and you'll see signals start to feed into here. Right? So that's really cool. I'm able to actually control how much headroom I have before I even hit my mastering chain. I actually usually bring this first plugin on my mastering chain in pretty early on in the mix just so I can see about how hard I'm hitting my final master fader. So I'm really just looking to bring this volume up until I'm driving these plugins about the level that I'm used to hitting, which is right around this zero dB VU. So you can see here when I'm at minus four, I'm coming in right about where I want to hit, right in this area. So by bringing that volume down by minus four, I'm buying myself a little bit of headroom going into these plugins. So the very first thing I'm doing here is I'm hitting our virtual mix bus. This is just adding a little bit of that console emulation and a little bit of drive here, which adds some grit and some really nice low end, especially when using this Brit end setting here. So I'll let you hear what this drive knob is doing. Right, so it just adds some really nice energy and it adds some really nice low end to the mix overall. From there, I go right into this EQ, which is just giving me a real high shelf at 12K. So the reason I bring this first plugin in my chain early on in the mix is because of this high end shelf that I'm doing. By having this high end shelf across the whole entire mix, it's a technique called top down mixing, where you start mixing from the very top and then approach all the individual tracks after. This is just ensuring that I have a good amount of high end going into my mix, so I'm not having to boost high end on all the individual tracks. 
I know that I already have a good amount of high-end presence just from this one move right here. So I'm boosting about almost 4 dB at that 12K range on my whole mix. Let's hear a quick before and after to what this virtual mix rack is doing. Right, so that one EQ move is adding a ton of high-end presence in a very, very good way. I like what that's doing. So after the virtual mix rack, we are going into our mix bus compression. The compressor that we are using on our mix bus is a classic for mix bus compression, the G Master bus compressor. This is a classic compressor for mix bus compression. I'm using some pretty standard settings here, two to one ratio, a slower attack, a mid-range release. Sometimes I'll have this set to auto, but for this song where it looks like we're at 0.6 seconds, I have a little bit of makeup gain, and I'm really just looking for this needle to barely kiss this. So with this threshold knob, you can see I have it turned all the way down because I'm really controlling how hard I'm hitting this compressor with this volume knob feeding into my plugins. So you can see here, I'm just barely kissing this thing right around 2, 3 dB, just barely getting a little bit of gain reduction on those peaks. This compressor is really just gluing my mix together and helping those vocals and that music be married as one. So after this compressor, we're going right into the virtual tape machine. This plugin here is by Slate Digital. It is a tape emulator and gives some really nice kind of harmonic presence to the mix. Overall, it just adds a little bit of energy and a little bit of that analog characteristics that a lot of time we're looking for in our mixes. So you can hear exactly what I'm doing here. These settings I have here at 30 IPS and FG456 tape type are really nice for hip hop mixes. I highly suggest if you have this plugin, try this setting out and see what it does for your mix. Let me show you what we're doing. Right, so you can just hear that thing wake up just a little bit. It just kind of takes a little bit of a step forward in a very nice way. I'm really just looking to hit this thing right around zero dB VU. You can tell that's a common trend here on my master chain. I'm never trying to hit any of these plugins too hard or too hot coming in. I'm always very conscious of my gain staging and how hot I'm hitting every stage of my mastering. So into this plugin, you can see I brought my input down just a little bit to make sure that I'm hitting right around here. If I were hitting too hot, this thing could sound distorted and it would sound real bad real fast. Let me show you what that sounds like. So yeah, you can see that doesn't sound good once we start hitting it too hot, but as long as we're hitting right around zero dB VU, we should be golden with this plugin. All right, now let's move into our first stage of limiting. You can see I have the L3 multi-maximizer. I'm able to actually focus in on very certain frequency ranges here and get compression in just those areas. If there's any buildup of frequencies in certain parts of the song, this is gonna help even things out and just really give me a nice, smooth, even mix. So let's see what the L3 is doing for us. You can see I'm basically only hitting right around this frequency range. There might have been just a little bit of buildup around that kick drum in that low end area, so this is just kind of help compensating for that. So you can see my threshold here I have at minus five and my output ceiling at minus four. I actually never even touch these settings at all. I know that my mastering chain, as long as I'm hitting these other plugins at the right levels, I should be feeding into this L3 right at that right level that I like. So I never touch my threshold and I never touch the output. If it turns out that I'm hitting this plugin too hard, I'll back down this fader right here to bring down the input going into my plugins, or I might even put a trim plugin right here or right here before this plugin just to bring that level down a little bit before getting to this plugin. Again, I'm never trying to overdrive any of these plugins and make them work too hard. The key is working in series and having little changes add up to the overall picture you're going for. So after my L3, I'm going right into this JST clip. Now JST clip is a soft clipping plugin. It's like a limiter, but instead of just ducking the signal when you cross the threshold, it's actually gonna cut off the signal in a very musical way and add a little bit of harmonic distortion so that we add a little bit more grit and aggression whenever we're applying this stage of limiting. You can see here I'm at 
plus four on my gain knob and I'm at minus three on my trim knob. So I'm driving this plug in to get some volume, but then I'm bringing the output back down to minus three to make sure I'm not hitting my next plug in too hot. Again, controlling my gain staging and really just making sure I'm not gonna overdrive any of these plugins. Let's see what JST Clip is doing for us. Right? So again, a very small difference, just a little bit of volume change, but overall, I'm just stacking this thing up just one little piece at a time getting to that overall volume that I'm looking for. So that is all the processing for my sub mix bus, but now let's get into the final two stages of limiting, which I actually have here on my master fader. This first one is our Slate Digital FGX. This is a very transparent and great limiter for getting volume without hearing any sort of pumping or hearing any sort of distortion from the limiter itself. So you can see this guy actually has a peak and an RMS readout, which is perfect for getting loudness. Generally, the RMS that we are shooting for is around minus 10 to minus 8. So before I turn this plug in on, let's see where we're hitting here on our scale. So you can see we're hitting right around this minus 12 to minus 13 range. We basically are looking to get about 3 or 4 dB of gain out of this limiter. Now a really cool thing here is also this button called constant gain monitoring. When you click this on, you actually are going to be able to hear what the limiter is doing without adjusting the volume of the output. So let me show you. As I turn this knob up while this button is engaged, you're not going to hear any volume difference and I can just hear what the limiter is actually doing to our signal. So you can see no matter how loud I drive that gain knob, the volume isn't increasing at all. I'm just able to hear the effects of the limiter. So like I said, we're looking for right around 3 to 4 dB of gain. So let's see if we can get this thing to hit right around that minus 10 to minus 8 RMS level. So right about here, I'm getting to that volume that I'm looking for. You can see right around minus 10 to minus 8, but I'm not hearing any sort of unwanted distortion or any negative effects from the limiter. So at this point now, I can click this button again and actually hear the volume change that we made with this limiter. Perfect. So I'm hitting right around that minus 9, minus 8 range at this loudest part, which is the chorus. Generally, the chorus is going to be the loudest part of the song or the area with the most energy. So this is perfect. This is exactly the levels I'm looking to get with this limiter. The very last plug-in in the chain here is this L2. This guy is barely doing any work at all. I honestly probably didn't even need to use it. I was just looking to gain just a little bit more volume out of this thing. So you can see I brought my threshold down to minus 1, just barely, barely tapping it, and I have my output ceiling to 0 0.2 which is just giving me that little bit of extra headroom for whenever I export this song out. But you can see that this thing is barely doing any attenuation at all. So let me show you what this L2 is adding to our mix. So like I said, it's very, very subtle, but it is making just a tiny bit of a difference. And overall, this series of limiting is how I'm getting that volume that I'm looking for without overdriving any of these limiters too hard individually. That's the key for getting loudness out of a song without overworking any plugins is by using multiple series of limiters to gain the volume that you're looking to get. So this very, very last plugin you see on the chain here is Span. This is just a frequency analyzer plugin that I use to get a visual representation of the song just to make sure the low end isn't too crazy or the high end isn't too unbalanced. I want to make sure this thing is pretty much a nice flat response all across the board. Let's see where we're at here. So yeah, that's the span plug in here. It's just giving me a visual representation of my song and making sure I don't have any frequencies that are too crazy out of line. You may have noticed also that I have a few grayed out plugins. These guys here I'm just not using on this particular song, but they're a part of my template that I use a lot of times. So this FG Gray here is a compressor that I use for parallel compression. If I find the overall mix needs a little bit of parallel compression, this guy here is for that. This Pultec here, this plugin here is great for adding some overall high end or a little bit of low end. 
A lot of time I'll use the 16K or the 12K range and I'll just boost to give me some more presence. If I need a little bit more bump in the bottom end, I'll go around 60 or maybe 100 and just give this a little bit of a boost. So this plugin just sounds great when you're boosting high end or low end in a very transparent way on the mix bus here. On this song, I didn't use it at all, so that's why it's grayed out. The last EQ I have here is my Q10. This EQ is great for doing any carving of any unwanted frequencies. So if at the last minute here I hear something around this 4K range, I can turn this guy on, I can bump the Q up all the way to 100, you see. And this is a very, very sharp, tight Q now, and I'm able to bring this down and just notch out that really annoying frequency if there's something there. Maybe there's some buildup in the low end or something just right around here in this mid range. This plugin's great for being able to sweep, find that problem frequency, and then just remove it surgically like that right at the last stage before going into all my limiting. So that's what I use this EQ for. You can see again, I didn't even use it on this mix. So I usually just keep these plugins grayed out until I decide that I need to use them. All right guys, so let's do a quick AB now just so we can see how far we've come with our full mastering chain. Pretty dope, huh? So there you have it. That is my basic mastering chain that I use on this style of music. Now obviously every song is going to be a little different in the way that I approach things, but this is my processing I'm using on most of my mixes. If you're interested in the template that I use for recording, mixing, and mastering songs like this, check that first link in the description. I put together three different templates. One of them's for just basic recording, another one has my full vocal chain with all of my effects that I use for vocal processing, and then the last one is my full-blown recording, mixing, and mastering template that I use in this video today. Check those out if you're looking to really speed up your workflow and improve your mixes fast. Now, if you found any of these tips and tricks helpful or useful today, do me a favor and smash that like button and leave me a comment below letting me know how you use some of these techniques in your next mix. If you haven't already, consider subscribing. I'm gonna be dropping a lot of heat real soon. So thank you for watching today and we'll see you in the next video. Peace. me for what? I'm pumping off them bucks. I'm chilling with a bunch of hippie chicks, rocking trucks, rolling some blunts, thinking we up. Surrounded by